Hi, let's talk about the internal gross anatomy of the kidneys. In this video, we'll discuss the internal gross anatomy of the kidneys. The parenchyma of the kidney, much like other organs, can be divided into a cortex and a medulla with the cortex surrounding the medulla. The medulla is organized into discrete collections of tissue called pyramids. These are probably poorly named because when you look at them uh, three-dimensionally, they're actually conical in nature. So they're named pyramids because when you section through the kidney or if you section through a cone, the profile looks uh, pyramidal in nature. If you want to relate this to histology, uh, the nephron loops, so the loops of Henle, as well as the distal portions of collecting ducts are found within the medulla. The cortex has uh, two distinct uh, components to it. There are the cortical arches. These are the regions which would be superficial to the bases of the pyramids. So I'm outlining those here. And then there are the renal columns. The renal columns are the spaces that interleave between the cortical arches and the lateral portions of the medulla. This, uh, this cortex is where we'll find the, um, the renal corpuscles as well as proximal and distal uh, convoluted tubules of the nephrons. Um, ultimately, the, uh, the distal portions of collecting ducts will travel down to regions of the medulla known as the renal papillae. These renal papillae are going to be surrounded by minor calyces. These minor calyces are the proximal most portions of the excretory pathway of urine. And these renal papillae therefore represent the point of no return um, at which uh, the renal filtrate is unambiguously urine. So all processes of tubular resorption and secretion are finished at this point and this fluid is now urine. So we'll discuss the granular details of the excretory pathway or the pathway by which urine is conducted from the kidneys to the urinary bladder and beyond in another video. Suffice it to say minor calyces are these proximal portions which surround the renal papillae and they're going to coalesce into major calyces and generally we'll have three to four minor calyces per major calyx and then major calyces will coalesce to form the renal pelvis and typically we'll have two to three major calyces per kidney. That renal pelvis can then be seen exiting the hilum and is contiguous with the ureter and that ureter is going then to conduct urine down to the urinary bladder. So we've discussed the various regions of the parenchyma, both the cortex and the medulla, as well as the proximal portions of the excretory pathway of urine. This is your summary slide. Thank you for your time.